As if dealing with one doubleganger was bad enough, but dealing with another one, this time from space? The king has to be thinking, who did I piss off this badly for this? I'm Demetrius and welcome to the Bermackian Podcast. This is an episode of review series where I can review anything but not everything. That includes monster movies, both big and small, anime and video games. This week is Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla. Right off the bat, there were a few questionable decisions behind the scenes. Takeo Okoara and Wataru Memora were absent for this project. As for their replacements, Toho brought on director Kensho Yamashita and screenwriter Hiroshi Kashiwabara. Both have more experience in producing teen idol films, however, it was not the first time that these two would be in a giant monster genre. They did work on Terror of Mega Godzilla back in 1975. It was here that they decided to put more focus on making Sagusa the character that Megumi Odaga had played since Versus Violante. Now, the idea of Space Godzilla actually dates back to 1978. For this project, the design was to be an homage to Violante herself. Creature designer Shinji Nishikawa initially envisioned the creature as a western dragon-like monster with long wings, but the final design ended up being a resemblance to Godzilla himself. Well, I should say Super Godzilla from the Nintendo game of the same name from 1991. Rumor had it that Koichi Kawakita changed the design of the Prince of Monsters, that will be Godzilla Jr., to a more cartoon-esque character because he was going to have a children's spin-off series called Little Godzilla's Underground Adventure. This turned out to be not true. One monster, or machine rather, is brought back from the shower era, Mogera from the 1957 film The Mysterians. Lastly, music composer Akira Fukube, after taking one look at the script, refused to score the film. In his place was Takayugi Katori. The end result was Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla, released in Japan on December 10th, 1994, and here is his plot synopsis according to IMDb, which is so short that I might as well read it myself. Godzilla is threatened by two new forces, Magira, another UN-built machine, and Space Godzilla, a beast spawned from Godzilla's particles in space. This film is on the same level as Raise Again from 1955, meaning it is very disappointing. There are a lot of interesting ideas, however, they are poorly executed. For example, Project T, the mafia using Godzilla like a stick of dynamite, the entirety of Space Godzilla in general, you know, the whole thing. The humans really didn't hold my interest all that much. Even Mickey, who we follow for the past four movies, is really unlikable in this. And that is because of how she was written. For example, Telekinesis. You mean to tell me that she never tried it before and just winged it? If she used it in, let's say, versus Biolanti, 
then when we get to this point, she will be in a league that no one would dare to touch. And while Yuki is the best character out of all of them, this one thing kind of ruined it. You know what thing I'm talking about, the blood coagulant bullet. Even I chuckled at the fact that he was going to succeed where Super X Mark 1 and 2, Biolanti, Ghidorah twice, Mothra and Batra, sort of, and Mechagodzilla have failed. That is just... <laughs> are you fucking kidding me? The others are pretty forgettable. Godzilla started to pay attention to his weight, thank god, but unfortunately all of that fat went to his legs. I get that he's bottom heavy, but Jesus. Junior isn't much better. Why did they have to change him? He was fine the way he is. The moment I saw him on screen, I immediately said, shoot that some bitch in the eye. Space Godzilla has a cool design, however, it is very limited of what it could do. Meaning, it was bean spams up the ass. Mogera isn't much better. He just felt like a massive prototype before Mechagodzilla was even a thing. It didn't help much with the special effects either. Man, are they a letdown from the previous. The biggest noticeable thing was the fight scene in space. I didn't know all of the stars vanished into nothing. Also, there are a lot of after effects that are just straight up missing. The music by Hattori... <sighs> okay, I've seen him get better over the years, but in his first outing, not all that memorable. Not even Space Guns of the Steam can save it. Overall, Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla is another one in the long line of disappointing movies for me. I don't hate it outright, nor do I think it's a guilty pleasure. That title goes to Son of Godzilla. If someone asks me about this film when they are going through the entire catalog of Godzilla movie history, I would tell them, mate, you won't be missing a thing by skipping this movie. This would be the part where I'm about to mention the next film, but not yet. I'm afraid we're going to have to take a little detour. And coincidentally, the next episode falls on the 30th anniversary of a certain turtle who is making his return to the big screen. I hear, like the World Wrestling Federation in the late 90s, that Gamera has developed a bit more attitude. And I cannot wait. Until then, thank you all for watching slash listening. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more of the Bermakian Podcast. This has been Demetrius signing off, and hail to the king.